Ms. Marsha. Chancellor, I have in my hand a suit that was filed by three white employees of the Department of Education seeking $90 million in damages, charging you with reverse discrimination and with creating a toxic atmosphere for white employees. Your response? Absolutely not true. That's it? You're not, you're not involved in any kind of racial discrimination? Absolutely not true. We have the truth on our side. So allegations can be made. It's absolutely not true. So let me follow up. They claim in this suit that on June 27, 2018, you said to a large group of people at Tweed, quote, if you draw a DOE paycheck, get on board with my equity platform or leave. Did you say that? And what did you mean? Did not say that. Absolutely did not say that. I give pep talks to the employees of the DOE all the time. As a chancellor, as a CEO of the organization, it's critically important that we remain focused on our mission. Let me be really clear. Our mission is to serve every one of the 1.1 million students under our care. That's our mission. And if your agenda is not to serve our students, if your agenda is an adult agenda and not a student agenda, then perhaps the Department of Education is not the right department for you to work in. So our agenda is to serve our students, and I, I categorically deny the allegation that has been made uh, and attributed to me. So are you trying to change the racial makeup of the staff at Tweed and the superintendents um, throughout the system? I want the most qualified, the most passionate, the most focused on student educators that I can find. That's what I'm focused on doing. I'm not going to talk specifics. As you know, allegations have been made. Anybody can make allegations about anything. Uh, we look forward to disproving them and vigorously fighting these allegations, which are not true. Uh, what I will say is that if you look at the data, if you look at who are the students that are performing well and who are not performing well, it is undeniable and without question that there are certain groups of students in the New York City Department of Education, as in other school systems across this country, that have not been served well by public school systems. It is our job to make sure that every one of those students is served well. And those individuals that I have hired in my tenure, my 14 months as chancellor, are the people that are best qualified, that are the most qualified, are highly qualified, are highly sought after in school systems across America, we're fortunate that we get to have them serving the children here in New York City. Uh, so that's really what this is really about, making sure that we're going to be able to serve all of our children uh, to the best of our capacity. I can't respond to any, uh, any of the allegations. I can just say that uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we have a process, we have an interview process. And at the end of the day, as chancellor, as a CEO, I have the opportunity uh, to hire the very best people for the positions and the work that we've done, that we're going to do as well. Yes, yes. ma'am. Well, the schools in New York City, uh, I haven't said they're segregated. There's been various reports, including a UCLA study that designated the New York City public schools as the most segregated school system in America. My question is to everyone that wants to change that in one year, where have you been for the last 90 years uh, that this has been developing? We are taking this on. We are not backing away from this. And here's my message to everyone that works in the New York City Department of Education. I've got your back. I've got your back. Because when you take on systems that have been structured that are not serving all of our students, there will be pushback. And I want you to know, do the right thing. Do the right thing for all students. And we will not be dissuaded or we will not be moved away from serving all of our students. And I, as a chancellor, have got your back because you need to have the back of all of our students. That's what this is, the work that we are about. That's what we're about. Again, the role of the CEO, in this case the chancellor, is to remind the organization at every opportunity possible why it is we're doing what we're doing. We're not here to collect a paycheck. We're, not, we're here to serve students. 
We're here to serve students to the best of our abilities. And it's my job to remind us that adult agendas cannot get in the way of children's agenda. And we're about a children's agenda. We're going to take on segregation wherever we find it. We're going to work with people. We have a district advisory committee that's given us one set of recommendations. They're set to give us another set of recommendations on systems and structures that exist in the school system. We've been working with local school uh, districts, community school districts, and their elected boards, community education boards, uh, around the work that they're doing as well. Uh, we, I've been very clear that there is nothing that is off uh, the table in terms of looking at how we are serving all of our students and we're going to continue to do that work but the goals that we've set forward are very very clear we want to improve learning and instruction we want to develop our people uh, we want to make sure that we're partnering in order to empower our community and undergirding everything is equity for all of our students equity now those four goals are all focused on creating a system that is serving all of our students Yes, sir. Uh, we're reviewing the complaint that was made. Uh, I don't have all of the details, uh, but we're reviewing that complaint right now. Who hasn't got yet? Alex? Re reading between the lines of what you said a moment ago about you know the restructuring, having an eye toward making sure that people on top leadership have the interests of children in mind. I mean, sort of reading between the lines of that comment, it seemed to sort of suggest that you felt like there were people in top leadership that didn't have that in mind. Is that part of what you're saying in terms of what was motivating the restructuring? You don't have to read between the lines. Let me be really clear. Um, when I was hired as a chancellor of schools, I came with some knowledge. And when I applied my knowledge as an executive, having served as a chief executive officer in two other large school systems in America, there are things that I saw in New York City didn't make sense. Didn't make sense from a structural perspective, didn't make sense from an operational perspective, and I made changes. Uh, last time I checked, as a chancellor, I have the prerogative of organizing the system to deliver better results. That's exactly what I did. Now, as we did that work, I also engaged with the community. And I heard from the community that there were things that didn't make sense. I heard from the community there were uh, support systems that weren't in place. And as I worked with my team, to create an organizational structure that meets those needs, I looked for individuals that had a keen eye for the kind of instructional focus, the kind of systemic organizational focus, and a passion for serving all students that I could find. And those positions were open, people had opportunities to interview for them, and at the end of the day, I feel extremely fortunate that we were able to hire the individuals in those positions that were the best qualified, that were the best capacitated, that went through those processes to serve in those roles. So I stand behind them. Chancellor, could you just tell us what the things you saw that didn't make sense and what you wanted to change? Sure, so uh, I heard from principals, for example, that uh, under, the, under the, the former structure, a principal had a direct supervisor that did their evaluation that was responsible for supervising their school. And there would be, they, so they'd receive direction and guidance from that person. And then there would be another position in the system that would swoop in and sometimes give contradictory direction and guidance. And then in some cases, even a third individual uh, from another office that would come in and give contradictory advice based on the other two pieces of advice. So who's my boss? was really the question and and if I'm being asked to do certain things how is that connected to the academic uh, agenda how's that connected to the structural organizational structure of the of the organization there was a lot of confusion in the system uh, there was also a sense that I heard from principals and community members that um, it was often difficult to get the re assistance or guidance that they wanted because uh, you had to know somebody to be able to barter for that kind of uh, support, and there was no clear structure for allocating those kinds of resources, which is why when I reorganized, I created the executive superintendent positions, and the executive superintendent positions are the CEOs, if you will, of their borough offices, and the supports and the coaches and the support people and resources that exist in those borough offices are at the direction of the executive superintendents who work hand-in-hand -hand with the superintendents who know their schools intimately. 
So when a principal is now saying, I need support, that support is coming through their superintendent who is their supervisor. And that superintendent along with their colleague superintendents is working on a team with their executive superintendent who is then making that very clear to us in the central office. It's a flattened organization, but it's a clear organization. Uh, I'm also uh, very proud of the fact that I have uh, as part of our reorganization, we went from a cabinet, a senior cabinet of 22, almost 23, 23 individuals, down to nine. So we flattened the organization. We've made it much more concise. And I'm also proud of the fact that I found the most stellar cabinet members to serve the students in New York City. And it happens to be also a point of pride in a diverse city like New York City that it is a diverse cabinet in all aspects, not only ethnically, but also in terms of gender. Uh, so I'm proud of the individuals that are serving our children. And I would say that the children in New York City, 70% of whom are black and brown children, get to see senior level administrators that look like them. What's wrong with that? And they happen to be extremely well qualified individuals who any moment could get tapped to lead their own school system anywhere across this country. We're fortunate to have them right here in New York City. You, also you get the last one. Kind of following up on what you said, the complaint references a tweet sent by your Office of um, Student Youth uh, Safety and Development, rather, um, that said, engaging in some courageous conversations about the systematic structures rooted in white cultural norms that must be addressed from the top within our own organization. So is that something that's been part of this restructuring, addressing white cultural norms? And if so, what, what does that mean? So again, I'm really clear about the structural reorganization that we've done is to create systems and structures that promulgate student, better student outcomes. That's what we've been focused on. In order to create better student outcomes, you also have to have individuals that have the capacity to recognize what their own uh, belief systems are and how their belief systems, in, in, how they um, work within a system to deliver uh, supports to the organizational structure. If you look at New York City, you are four times more likely if you're a black student in New York City to be suspended than your peer groups. If you are a student in New York City at the high school level, you're uh, seven to uh, 12 times more days or you're, you're seven to 12 more days of suspension than your peer groups. That can't be a function of just being a kid who a kid is. That's a function of a system, a structure that sees certain students certain ways. And let me tell you, 30 years as an educator, we cannot not engage in this conversation, not in a city like New York City that is diverse not in a city where 1.1 million students will eventually be the residents in jobs, paying taxes, supporting this economy, supporting this development of this city. We have to educate our students, and to educate our students, we have to meet them where they are, and we have to have a children's agenda. That's what this is all about. We have to have a children's agenda, and those are the individuals that I've really, really tasked to bring the kind of change and alignment that we need to make sure children are being served. Thanks, folks. Okay, thank you so much.